So this is the single most asked question on my YouTube channel and that question is, should I get Nomad or Forger? And it's just got a whole lot easier for me to answer and I'll explain to you why in this video. So iPad sculpting's been around for uh, quite some years now, longer than you would probably think. So Forger started around um, nine or ten years ago, and uh, the development has been strong all the way along. So I spent most of my time with Forger, and I really started heavily sculpting with Forger last year. Forger's got an incredible sculpting system. It's got a full range of uh, sculpting brushes. You've got the ability to paint on those models and there's obviously materials and even background images can be just dropped in um, as you need for reference. So it's a fully featured sculpting app. And as I say, it's been around for quite some time. So it's, it's, it's quite stable on all of the machines that I've tried it on and I can't say that I've got any major issues with it. However, uh, last summer, Nomad Sculpt came along with a bank. So I did a launch video, um, or on the day of launch, for Nomad Sculpt. And um, it's probably one of my most successful or most um, uh, liked videos. So there's obviously a need for iPad sculpting because there's now two major players in the field with a few other ones coming along behind that. But the question is now, which one should you go for? And the reason I say it got a whole lot easier is because this week or last week now, and Maxon, who owns Cinema 4D, acquired Forger. Now that's quite significant because that means that one of the big players in the industry, and if you think of people like Autodesk and Adobe and the Foundry with Modo, um, it's one of those companies, that being Maxon, has decided that they want one of these apps in their, in their suite. And I don't think anybody really saw that it could be Maxon to be the first one to dive into it. But here we are, and they've swallowed it into their family. Now, that some people have um, a negative opinion on that, and some people have a positive opinion on that, because our instant fear and the questions that come straight away on social media are, does that now mean a subscription model? Does that mean I've got to pay every month for this? Um, as you would see with things like uh, Adobe taking in, things like Substance Painter and Substance Designer. Or does it mean it will fundamentally change the program? Or does it mean it will become part of a suite? So nobody knows is the answer. Um, but if, if you're in that middle ground at the moment saying which one to, to buy or which one to take, the answer really is still get both of them. So one, they're still relatively cheap. As you can see there, there's the current prices today for the two apps. And if one's going to be a subscription model or if, you know, if Forge is going to be absorbed into Maxon, then just buy it now. And then you've got it, you've got it there ready. And once you've bought it and purchased it, that will probably stay there forever. Normally with these kind of apps, what happens is that version will stay around. It's, you know, if you've purchased it, they can't really take that off you with with, with ease. Um, and there aren't, there aren't a humongous amount of differences um, in terms of the the what the actual app does however currently nomad's got the edge because the developers added things like um post processing he's added things that really make a difference which is the trim tool so you can trim off your models you can split you can push holes through with voxel remeshing that makes it a very different product and it makes it much more functional across more sectors. So if you want to get into jewellery, you really need split tools. If you want to get into um, sculpting uh, with an idea of 3D print, then you're going to want to put um, pegs or, or, or some kind of holes in things to make them fit together. And if you haven't got voxel remesh and you haven't got split, then you're going to be limited a little bit. Now, I personally think that that's all going to come and I think that the, you know, Maxon will put some effort behind uh, the development of, of Forger and it will get a lot of those tools that are being so well received by the Nomad community. 
Um, so in that regard, I do think that that's a good thing. But um, we don't know is the answer. So for for those kind of prices, I would suggest having both in your arsenal and just be ready to see what happens and what what Maxon decides that they're going to do with, with, with that product. They already have a sculpting part of Cinema 4D. And to say that it's not as successful um, as, say, you know, Blender sculpting or the, or the granddaddy ZBrush w- would be a very true statement. It's not been adopted by the industry in the way that the others have or even 3D Coat. So maybe, you know, there could be something along the lines of them wanting to get a sculpting solution that, that works better than their own in-house one. Uh, nobody knows. These are all completely... Um, made up ideas of what could be coming, but it's certainly interesting to think about where these these um, apps are going to go. And now, because you can do things at very very high level, um, you know, if I, you know some of the the models that I'm working on, sometimes from ZBrush, then over to Nomad and back again, they they they're not losing much in that transition, and that means you've got a way to sculpt when you're away from your studio. It means you've got a way to sculpt on the train, in university. It means you can do uh, assets for game when you're traveling. It means lots and lots of things that make it a a very viable sector to make. So mobile sculpting and iPad sculpting in particular, because it's the stronger piece of hardware in the marketplace with the Apple Pencil, then it's going to become a a very, very strong um, uh, part of the industry. And who knows who's going to win? Who knows who's already developing other programs in the background? We're seeing it with VR now that lots of companies are, are popping up. So it won't just be Adobe Medium and Gravity Sketch and Oculus Quill and and all of those uh, you know amazing programs that people like me started with over the last four or five years. There's There's a whole battleground being formed around mobile sculpting, which is great because that leads to people wanting to make things cheaper and better and more efficient and uh, as the hardware is growing as we'll see hopefully this year with the ipad 2021 and as that hardware grows and you're getting six and eight gigs of ram now in you know in in these mobile devices they can handle quite large data sets so it's not you know unknown or i you know i've easily been handling 25 30 million polygons on on the current 2020 iPad. So what will happen when I've got an, another couple of gigs of RAM and a, and a chip that's that's obviously going to run faster. So there's a lot to there's a lot to look forward to in the hardware side of mobile sculpting. And I do honestly think there's a lot to look forward to in in the software with Forger being in the Maxon family. So it'll be incredibly um interesting to see how that evolves over the coming months and um, I can't wait to be part of testing that and, and getting my hands dirty, finding out whether it's any, you know, any better than Nomad um, or, or whether it's it's gone the way of apps that get bought and get forgotten about. Um, I hope it would be the former, but you, you just never know in, in this uh, cutthroat world. So for now... Keep both, buy them both, focus probably on Nomad for the moment because it's seeing a development cycle that includes weekly or bi-weekly updates. And that's what you want to see, a developer that's um, in a position to keep updating the software while you respond to it as a, as a user. And obviously um, what we're seeing with Forger is that it's in a kind of halt in its development until Max on decide what they're going to do with it. Um, But again, very exciting times and I'm really looking forward to seeing where this goes. So this is our second course following on from the iPad Beginners Sculpting course and where that focused on the basics of how to sculpt on an iPad and how to make your first character, this one is firmly about creature design, namely the Tyrannosaurus Rex. The course isn't for absolute beginners, so you need to have either taken our first basics course or at least know the basics of how to use Nomad Sculpt, or in fact any 3D sculpting package would be a bonus. I'll teach you how to add references, block out a full creature with simple primitives, then mesh that together and begin the initial stages of sculpting. 
We move on to secondary forms and how to build up muscle groups and main bony landmarks on a dinosaur. In this video, we're starting to look at workflow techniques and specifically for iPad sculpting, where we don't have all the tools and features of a desk-bound system. I'll cover off primary and secondary and tertiary forms and also take a look at a routine I like to use where you're always clear whether you're in creation or refinement mode and what that actually means. We're providing the main Nomad Sculpt files so that you can either use them as a reference, assist you if you're struggling with any part of the course, and of course you could just 3D print them, and who doesn't want a dinosaur on their desk? We've included all the alpha images that we use throughout the course in a pack of 50 skin and scale alphas. Two bonus videos give you a glimpse of how to retopologize in ZBrush using ZRemesher, and a 40 minute painting session with Procreate where we take a look at how to use exported Nomad images. It's packed full of useful tips and tricks and it's structured to allow you to follow along at your own pace. There's also a bundle option if you think you need to go back to the basics before tackling the big guy. And that's all available right now.